All right, guys, so today I thought it would be a cool video to go ahead and show you guys the picture profile settings that I shoot with on my Sony ZV-1 and how I tweak the colors. So basically a little bit of color grading in LumaFusion. Right? Now keep in mind, the ZV-1 is an 8-bit camera, so you're going to be limited to the amount of color grading that you can do because it's not a 10-bit camera, so just keep that in mind. But at the same time, I feel like the ZV-1 is a good starting point to start to dive into learning how to color grade. All right, so I shoot in PP10, HLG2, which looks like like this and typically it has that like dull look it looks kind of bright sometime or overwatched out sometime depending on how bright the lights are and stuff like that and it looks a little washed out um, but after a little bit of tweaking uh, and applying some settings in LumaFusion I can always get it to kind of come back and look like what you see right now all right so today I'm gonna show you the settings in my camera so that you can kind of have them for reference and then I also show you uh, the settings in LumaFusion and how I tweak my sliders basically I already have a preset that I just dump on all of my videos at the very end um, but I'm gonna show you that that preset and the sliders and all that stuff so you can kind of see how I color grade the HLG2 footage out of the ZV-1 in LumaFusion. All right, let's do it. All right, so you're going to make sure you're under the first tab. You're going to scroll to page number nine and under page nine, go down to picture profile and you're going to select PP10. All right, under PP10, here are the settings. Black level is going to be zero. You got your gamma, which is HLG2. Black gamma, we're going to leave it at middle. Knee, we're just not going to touch it. Leave it at manual. Uh, color mode, BT2020, but you can use 709 as you can see in the difference of the color. I like 2020, but you may choose 709. Saturation, we're going to leave it at zero. Color phase, we're going to leave it at zero. And color depth, we're going to leave everything at zero because we make a lot of these changes uh, in LumaFusion. All right. So then after that, you got detail, reset, and copy. All right. So let's jump into LumaFusion. Okay, so we're right here in LumaFusion, and I got one clip that I split into two parts that I labeled the first half before and the second half after. Okay, so now just keep in mind, we just shot in PP10, which was HLG, and we used BT2020, but keep in mind, you can use 709, Rec 709 if you want to. Now, we shot in 2020, and this might sound weird, but if you go to the corner down here, make sure your preferences is set. Down here in the corner, make sure your settings is set. This is the first thing you want to do in LumaFusion. So you got standard Rec 709, which is what I like to use for my project settings. Now, you can change the color space to whatever you want right here. You can change it to standard Rec 709, 10-bit, but keep in mind the ZV-1 shoots 8-bit, so if you switch it to 10 bit it's not going to look like it did anything because the camera is an 8-bit okay you can switch it to wide gamut HDR HLG if you want to start working from there um, or you can uh, switch it to uh, HDR HDR uh, 10 if you want to do that uh, or the last one is wide gamut HDR P3 D65 HLG which looks like that so just keep in mind whatever preference you put here is where is what you're going to start to work in um, as far as uh, the preferences go and the color space, all right? So for me, I want to work in 709, even though I shot in 2020. Uh, to me, I just like working in 709 here, even though it seems like it might not make sense to shoot in 2020, but then still convert it to 709 when you could have shot in 709 because you're going to be in 709 in LumaFusion. I know it doesn't make sense, but I like how 2020 looks in camera, uh, and then when we come over to LumaFusion, I like 709. All right, so once you got your uh, settings, but well, your color space set, we'll go down here, and again, we have before and after. All right, so we're gonna leave the before clip the same, and we're gonna work over here in the after, and I'm gonna show you guys what my settings look like. Okay, so I'm gonna double click right here and keep in mind also here in LumaFusion you can turn on your scopes and all of that stuff because they did update it but because I've already done this uh, these settings a long time ago and never used any of this stuff down here because it wasn't available at the time I'm turning it off because I don't need it all right so right here you are going to make sure you click color and effects right here in this corner color and effects see once you click color and effects you can go up here and then you can start applying your presets and actually saving them but because I've saved so many presets down here in the start I got so many presets for my footage and uh, my GoPro, my iPhone, the ZV-1 and so forth. I'm just going to scroll down to the one that I love to use the most out of all the ones I've created uh, in the past, which is this one right here, uh, PP10 HLG2. So once I apply that, you're going to see all of these settings uh, that I have changed um, pop up, all my sliders and stuff. Now, color edges, I always delete that because I never needed it. I don't know why. I just saved it there one day and forgot to delete it. So now when I you know open it up it's always there but I need to delete I deleted that for this video all right so these are all of the settings now 
something's got a, a, a little bit of this is going to seem like it could be repetitive and I could have done it all in probably one or two or three of these little sliders or whatever. But I just want to show you guys exactly what it looks like and what I have for my settings. OK, so my first one right here, I got contrast and under contrast, I have it set to one point two zero. So 20, I just always say the last digit. So the last two digits. So 20, I added 20 to the uh, contrast saturation. I added uh, five to it and vibrance. I added 0.5, well, zero five. All right. So those are my first one, two, three sliders that actually have any uh, value right here. My highlights and shadows that right there is set to zero, as you can see, but my highlight amount is set to a full one because if I turn it off, it looks like that. So I got it set to a full one. My shadow amount is left at zero. Now, that's for contrast. But keep in mind my original and contrast. I could have all done. I could have did what I did in original right here up in contrast. But I like to have it separate. OK, so as far as sharpness is concerned, I always leave it turned off and I turn that on uh, on occasion if I feel like the video needs it. But I kind of like to shoot a little soft. I don't like it to look too, uh, too sharp. But if I turned it on, this is what it would look like. Very, very subtle. You probably can't tell or probably can't see it, uh, but it's very, very subtle. OK, uh, but I like to leave it off and then I turn it on if I need be. Uh, so right here, original right here. This is everything under my original settings. Now, keep in mind, original and contrast, all those settings are the same. Uh, but there's, there's a few in original that I wanted to change that I didn't want to change on the contrast. So basically, I just separated. So right here, my brightness, I got to set to 10. But depending on the lighting in the room, if I don't have my lighting set uh, really high, then I'll just come in here and adjust this uh, in post. So I always start out in 10. But if I need to go up, I can go up, as you can see right here. If I want to brighten this up, I can, but for this video, I'm leaving everything like how I typically do it. So it's at 10. My contrast is at four right here. So I added a little bit more contrast down here, but even though up here in contrast, it's at 20, as you can see. So basically when you put it in perspective, I added another four to the contrast, as you can see. Uh, saturation, we left it at an even one. Vibrance, we left it at zero. But if you come up to contrast, we already did our saturation and vibrance, as you can see. So uh, right here. Next, we have highlight radius. We left that to zero. Highlight amount the same and all that stuff's the same. Now, keep in mind, everything I did here, I could have really did up there, but I always like to separate it just because I may want to turn this stuff off like this. So if I turn off my original, it'll look like that. If I turn on my original, it'll look like that. If I turn off my contrast, it'll look like that. If I turn it back on, it'll look like that. So I kind of like to have that stuff separate. Uh, for color pop, uh, my color pop, I always like to leave it at 80 right here so let me go down to 80 just to show you guys i always like to leave it at 80 but when but but when i did these settings back in the day i left it at uh at one i left it at one um because the lower you go the more it messes with the color as you can see so i like to be at about 80 sometimes 85 depending on you know my lights in the bag and stuff like that but right now i got it at 85 i'm actually going to put it back to 90 but this is what it looks like okay and if i turn it off you probably can't tell but if you look at this light and this light right here you can see it see that it's very very minute but it's there okay so we'll leave that on and then as far as uh the uh vignette i love to have a vignette because i like to have that little darkness around these lights so that's the only reason why i put the vignette but it's at 75 and one if i turn it off this is what it looks like if i turn it back on this is what it looks like now Turning it off, it still looks good to me, uh, but I like to turn it on because I like to give these lights a little bit of shadow over them so it can look like they stand out. That's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these settings don't even make sense, but this is just what I like to do with my HLG2 footage. OK, so now since we got all that stuff set, let's bag out of this real quick and we'll play the before and after. All right. So here's before. As you can see, it has a little bit of dullness, just a little bit, a little washed out. Colors are still there, but it's a little washed out. Then we jump into the after, as you can see. And, you know, this is what it looks like. So hopefully, you know, this video has helped you guys a little bit um, as far as the uh, colors is concerned and how to shoot an HLG2 on the ZV-1. You know, my settings may not be for you. But I just wanted to help you guys and give you like a starting base point to where you won't be scared to dive into your camera and mess with some stuff, you know, and mess with the pro picture profiles and try to color grade them and just have a little bit of fun. Because to me, 
color grading this stuff is actually fun. So that's why I like to shoot in uh, PP10, HLG2, and then I like to come in here and play around with the colors. As you can see, I got so many different presets uh, for my uh, ZV-1 that it's a shame. I got so many. I think I got like 20 or 25 of them in there. So at any given moment, I can always, you know, shoot an HLG2 and drop a preset and start working from there. So, you know, I highly suggest if you are using LumaFusion, make you a lot of different presets, man, so that you can kind of speed up your workflow. All right, guys. So there you have it. All of my PP10 settings, which is basically HLG2 uh, and a little bit of color grading and LumaFusion, man, uh, just to help start you guys on your path to trying to learn how to color grade. All right. So if you found this video to be helpful in some way, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. It's been your man, Jay, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. Yeah.